Good morning. It's going to be a busy day. So I've got a grocery order coming from Kroger and I've got to do a lot of food prep, some baking. So I just thought I would bring you guys along with me. So let's make some coffee and get started. guys today is gonna be a little bit different I'm gonna be doing some baking as well as some prep for a gathering now I wanted to start off with a Kroger grocery haul I'm new to Kroger here in Texas we had some of their stores out in California the closest one near me is actually 25 miles away but they do offer a grocery delivery so I'm taking advantage of that now Kroger can be a little pricey but I just shopped all of their coupons and so that's why there's so much ice cream I think they ended up being a dollar 99 so I got like one for everyone in the family and celebrating birthdays and all that same with this milk I usually buy a full gallon because I have a teenager who will drink one of these a day so I'm just going to be unloading my groceries and showing you guys kind of what I picked up everything was on sale or a coupon and I am looking for different places to shop I did share an H-E-B shop with me this week and I love H-E-B but I want to have plenty of options and know what's around me and where the best prices are we're also going to do some real talk in this video this is something that's taken me like a week to pray through and I hope that you're encouraged by it as well so obviously in our family I do the majority of the shopping and the buying I think for the most part women and moms we are the nesters and we are the shoppers and men are hunters and gatherers but we go out and we fine-tune everything that everyone needs and so that has definitely been on the forefront I think this week for us thinking about where we spend our money and if that is a wise decision. So it's going to be a little bit of a salty Friday chat. Now when I shared with you guys how I wanted to be sharing more than just shop with me's and decorating and though I'm still going to be doing those things I wanted to incorporate more of who I am your response was it had me in tears for days let me just say I went through all the comments and I was just so excited that so many of you are in the same place you're thinking about the same things the same things are on your heart and i think that that really matters i think that being together in certain things like this can really be important and so thank you and i think going forward i'd like to maybe have a name for our videos that are like this i was thinking maybe the 300 club i'd love to hear from you down below um because so many of you said that you would be part of my 300 and honestly I was just completely humbled I'm tearing up now thinking about it you guys are just the best and while we're going to be talking about some current things on my heart um, the focus is really I'm hoping to be more honoring of God in my life and not salty in the way you're probably thinking about it. So many of you guys know I've been shopping at Target for years. Uh, when I grew up, we had a Jimco and that's how old I am. <laughs> that's where my ears got pierced when I think I was three months old. And eventually Jimco went out of business and Target sort of moved in and took over. And that became sort of the rich store. And we didn't always shop there. Honestly, I really only got to go there with one of my friends whose parents both worked and they had a little bit more money. Dad drove a Corvette. And so it was kind of a special treat to me. It was during middle school when, you know, going to look at the wet and wild makeup was the best thing ever. I am so dating myself. Then fast forward to being young and having no money. <laughs> Going through college and nursing school and being out on my own, I just didn't have enough money to shop there. 
Once I was a mom and we had moved from one area to another, there was just fewer Walmarts and other stores to shop at. So I ventured into Target a little bit and uh, I found great clearance prices and I would buy things ahead of time. So they'd have this like toy clearance once or twice a year and I would buy a bunch stock them away so I had things on hand for birthday parties and maybe for next Christmas or birthdays things like that and that was really my jam and then they came out with the dollar spot and honestly I was addicted I was addicted early on and you guys know I just love affordable home decor it's evolved and changed over the years we've all started calling it the five dollar spot and I get it. it. The prices have gone up everywhere. They have to do it as well. I also feel like what you can find there is probably less exciting now than it was years ago. And I'm talking like seven years ago, probably actually closer to 10. My kids were really little when I first started shopping in the dollar spot. And that was long before I even filmed a video about it. Fun fact is my first video ever here on YouTube was a Target dollar spot haul. I had been thinking about picking up the camera and I was at Target. I found a bunch of stuff for Christmas and I hopped on wearing my camo t-shirt that I still wear. And uh, I'll put that on for you guys maybe in a few months. If we hit 100,000, I'll put it on and come back on. Maybe we'll just even do a live just for fun. Um, but all that to say, that's how my relationship was sort of evolved with Target. And if you've had blinders on and you don't have any idea why I'm talking about Target, I'm about to say the quiet part out loud. Now, they've always had a pride section that I can remember for at least the last five years in the front of the store. And it has grown over the years. It started out as sort of one of those little floating islands. And it usually shows up in May and it's expanded every year and this year there's been a lot of concern because there seems to be an agenda behind pushing things on children and bathing suits involved and designers with a satanic background and it's just sort of pushing the limit every year it's sort of going above and beyond in your face loud and proud and I just have to wonder if stores would, in the same manner, honor things like Easter and Christmas for Christians who would love to see a Bible display of all kinds of um, different Bibles for journaling and Bible accessories right there in the front of the store with scripture and I think we all know that that's not going to happen and so this has been obviously all over the news and so many are calling for boycotts of Target so many are wondering hey Chip and Joanna where are you on this issue your believers and we want to know we want to know where where you're at and I've yet to hear anything from them. Obviously, they are Christians and they drive a lot of the purchases into Target. I think that was our last shop with me it was last month. And we went in and saw some of their summer items in the Hearth and Hand collection. And I love their stuff. It's beautiful. It's pricey for my budget, but it is beautiful. And I like to look at it and get different ideas. And so that's where my heart is. I've just had this sort of on my mind all week. I have personally been into my store twice. Um, and once I was able, I wanted to see with my own eyes what I was seeing on the news. Because let's be honest, you have to see things with your own eyes. And I did. And then I actually returned uh about a week later and that was completely changed and I don't know if that's where I live and why that was done but it was pushed to the back of the store and I'm struggling with this um, my heart tells me that I in some small way have an opportunity to honor God with where I shop 
And so it made me think of when I was younger. And so as I've told you guys, I didn't grow up with much. This was probably the mid 80s. And we had next door neighbors uh, Two, they had two daughters, one was a little bit older than me. And so she was the cool teenager. And then one was like two or three years younger than me. And um, she was hearing impaired. And so it was a real blessing. I got to learn um, sign language and I just learned a lot from their family but needless to say I always wanted to be with the cool teenager but she was busy being a cool teenager and this is when 80s earrings were all the rage like the bigger the brighter the weirder the shape the better and I think she had gotten a pair and she was wearing them and I was obviously not cool. I didn't have any. And this is when my creativity was born out of um, not having the money, honestly, to do things. And so I went inside, I got some construction paper and some tape. And I remember they were bright orange and I cut out sort of a interestingly shaped triangle and then I put some tape right at the top and then I put the tape right behind my earlobe and from afar you could not tell I was any wearing earrings <laughs> it's one of those things like um, with a piece of art from far away it looks very different than it does close up and so <laughs> I thought how cool am I I'm gonna have her attention so I walked in front of her house and they would always be looking out the window and she, she made a beeline when she saw me walking past and she got close up to me and she saw the earrings for what they were. They were construction paper and tape. And I think she was a lot less impressed suddenly, but then sort of, it, it made her wonder because, um, from afar, it looked really good, but I got her attention. And I don't know why that came to mind. That happened when I was like eight years old. But for some reason with this situation, I feel like I feel like maybe I've gotten Target's attention for the first time in my life. And not just me, obviously. I would say more so um, families and moms and people who can just see clearly in protecting children and so you know when I was uh, 13 years old and spending maybe five dollars on wet and wild makeup at Target I didn't have their attention when I was even maybe a young mom and spending maybe two hundred dollars a year on clearance toys I didn't gather their attention I have spent a lot of money at Target in the last few years and I'm a mom and I'm a gatherer and I make sure that my family has what they need and so I think I have an opportunity to just kind of say what I believe is right and what I believe is wrong and if you want me to spend money in your store you're going to have to treat me with as much uh, honor and respect as you treat others and so a scripture that has been something I'm reading right now is in Matthew chapter 5 and it's talking about salt and light in verse 13 and it says you are the salt of the earth but if salt has lost its taste how shall its saltiness be restored it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Have you ever stood in complete darkness and realized how dark things can truly be and then once you light something as small as a match you realize how bright it is how much light that it gives how you can now see where you're going 
and each of us have that light. I always think of that uh, vacation Bible school, Sunday school song, this little light of mine. And so with that, how do I let it shine? How do I let it give light to a dark world? And what comes to mind is a, another Bible verse. It's actually in Second Peter. In chapter 2, verse 15, it says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people live as people who are free not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil but living as servants of god and i read that this week and you can read something time and time again but it's kind of like a movie the more times you watch it the more times you read it you pull out different things. If I can be just totally honest with you guys, I mean, I came on <laughs> camera at the beginning of this video after I just woke up. So, I mean, let's just be real here. Um, I think a lot of Christians, I think a lot of believers don't want to share that with the world because then you're held to a standard. And we know that only Jesus can meet that standard. But that's not something that the world who doesn't know him is going to understand. And so it's been weighing on me. It's been resonating in me. And, and I've been thinking about what my place is in this. And I have decided. So I have decided not because Target carries a pride section. They've been doing that for years and not because that section was pushed to the front of the stores but because there is something in my heart and in my soul that hurts when i see things pushed on children and things that are demonic i've decided to part ways with target and that's at least for the foreseeable future um, I don't know, things may change. This certainly wasn't on my radar this year. But going back to that verse in 2 Peter chapter 2, you know, to put to silence foolish people. So what I'm hoping is that the world will not look at people who step away from Target and vote with their feet and with their dollars to say this is not okay and I'm going to take my money and I'm going to shop elsewhere because I don't feel respected as your customer. What I'm hoping is that that is seen as a valuable point of view and today's world I know I'm asking for a miracle here. Certainly if you guys have followed me and you know me and I were to continue pumping out Target and what they're putting out in the dollar spot and home decor and you know I'm a Christian, wouldn't you question my motive? Would I just be doing it for the content, for the clicks and views and money? What is more respectable? Is it to follow my conviction and to do what I feel is right in my own conscience to God, who I will stand in front of. We all will. We all have an expiration date. You guys know I love reminding us all that we have an expiration date. And as someone who is currently in a flare, you know, I have suffered from MS and they're thinking lupus as well for many years, uh, I'm just more aware of my expiration date. Maybe my stamp is just a little bit bigger on my gallon of milk. And so I see it for what it is. And I know that there is more to this world than the here and now. So for me, for now, I am going to be shopping other places. I'm not going to be going to Target. I'm going to be consistent in what I've shared with you guys and I hope you can respect that. I hope that that would put to silence the ignorance of foolish people so that there isn't an opportunity for people to say, hey, Auntie Cuckoo, she says that she's a Christian. She says that she goes to church and look at her. She's over there pumping out 
that target content like no one else. And so that's where I'm at. I, I've been asked by a lot of people and I've been waiting for my heart to sort of be clear on the issue and and take a minute to really pray and understand how I can be salt and light in the world. And of course, we are to be in the world, but not of it. This is not our home. And so we are going to be foreigners here. Um, You know, this is not a stance on stores having a pride section even. Um, I understand it fully and Walmart has some and HEB has one and pretty much every store has one and here in the United States of America they have the right to carry that merchandise. Um, For me the place of my heart is that I cannot back a store when it comes to pushing anything on children kids are just confused enough trying to figure out math and spelling and reading. I just cannot stand behind pushing things that are adult on children. And so for the people that would say, why not just live and let live? That's exactly what I'm doing. I am living and I am letting live. And I encourage you to do the same. And Hopefully, I can gain your trust by being 100% transparent and honest with you and not in a mean, angry, or hateful way, but just saying, this is who I am, this is what I believe, and this is where I stand. And I think that if we all did that in a respectful manner, this world could be a whole lot easier to get along in. Um, So I would love to hear from you. Honestly, you guys, reading your comments, hearing what you're feeling on issues, it just is everything to me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it encouraged you to think about your own position on things. And until next time, friends, I'll see you very soon.